Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, uh, or should I say, I am back, uh, it's been quite a few months, I know some of you were waiting for news and updates on this project, uh, so I'm excited to actually be back and uh, working on uh, this bike. Um, today actually we will be working on a battery, uh, I got this from uh, Chijia Brutal Customs, uh, it's a battery box that fits exactly the uh, anti-gravity battery that I got so uh, that's perfect for this and uh, we just need to uh, bolt it down on the bike wherever I want um, also we'll take care of the fender and if we have time maybe the seat bracket um, the fender is putting the rear fender uh, sorry the front fender in the rear and for that I also got a kit uh, from also TJ Brutal Custom so I'll show you all the process on uh, how I uh, do this and uh, Hopefully everything will be uh, will be uh, set up for, for the next stage. Um, if you uh, want to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Otherwise, let's get started. All right, so we are gonna place fat battery box. Um, one thing to note is this side here. There is a little bit of a piece of metal going. So if you go further, you actually can touch it without touching this bar. So you need to be careful about that. So what we want to make sure is, I don't want to touch it completely, but like right about here. So we'll mark this space here and it's about in the middle. Okay, all right. So we're gonna do a boost to holes and uh, we'll be good to go. One thing I recommend is drill, drilling one, verifying that the other one is in a good position. If not, just uh, reposition uh, the, your mark and then uh, go from there. Uh, don't drill right away those two without verifying that the second hole will be actually perfectly aligned. Uh, otherwise you're gonna have issues. So let's drill those two. All right, so first thing first, I'm gonna, whoop. I'm gonna tap um, the first one here just to make sure that it doesn't go all over the place. So the hole is a little bit bigger, right? and what it's going to do, it's going to put a rivet completely placed in there. And with the rivet gun, what it's going to do, it's going to press this down so it stays in place. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so what we have here is a rivet nut setter. Um, so basically what we have is you have the rivet nut, um, and then you're, you're going to have it open. And then by pressing down this way, uh, closing it, this will basically, uh, sorry, it's this way, uh, this will basically kind of sp uh, press the rivet uh, completely together so that it stays in the hole. And what, it, what you can do after is just have your uh, your screw, your bolt, and then, uh, then that's pretty much it. So that avoids having a hole um, uh, going through the entire tube, um, which I, personally prefer that um, and it stays in place um, much easier also to remove and put on so what thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change this, this is an M5 so we're gonna change it to M8 So if you have um, this thing, which is come, it, it comes from um, Arbor Freight. What you do is you hold this and pull this down in order to remove and add your head, and then uh, you put big, the big one back. In this case, name eight. All 
right. What we do is open the rivet setter completely and um, we're going to put it this way. Just insert it completely. And then we're going to use this and insert it in the back. So now that we have the hole, we have the gun uh, prepared, uh, the rivet nut setter gun prepared. What we're going to do is place it in the hole level as much as possible. And we're going to press those two uh, the, the two handles closer together in order to set the rivet nut. So now that it's done, I'm just going to unscrew this. And now I have the rivet nut completely nicely put. Um, by the way, this is stainless steel, so it's not going to rust. Uh, this is important, in my opinion to ensure you put stuff that is not going to rust uh, in those places. So now that we have this place, we are going to put the battery box with the with a temporary bolt and then we're going to make sure we are remark on the second hole to make sure it fits perfectly. perfectly aligned. Um, the issue for me to align it was the fact that to drill this hole, this second hole was the, um, the strut being right here and you can see it's like literally just below it. Um, so that was an error from my part to not think of my drill space. Um, but in order for you to avoid that kind of situation, um, see if you can uh, put it in between uh, maybe a little bit further to the right or the right or uh, another option is actually to dismantle the uh, dismantle this entire strut or suspension if you have it and then just drill with uh, without anything you know anything in the way um, so I think that probably is the best recommendation in my opinion So that's the box and it's not moving at all and this is where we can have the battery. Yeah so one thing probably to think of is having something to pull easily, e easily the battery so one thing we could do is put a little bit of foam in the bottom. Uh, I believe the battery came with some so I might use that in the bottom um, in order to lift it a little, slightly a bit just like this so I can basically grab it more easily. So I actually found the, the foam that comes with the, the battery and I'm just going to place it like this to give you an ID and this is this is what we can do i might reduce a little bit the height of that foam but the advantage of uh, having this so first off you would need to attach no matter what we would need to find a way to attach the battery um so i'll work on this uh i have a few ideas and we'll, we'll talk about this when when i take care of the inside here um uh, but you know like i can basically with that foam that comes with the battery i can just lift the battery very easily without questions um, and it's uh, still a little foam like this and there's, it's, um, there's a tape in the back it's sticky so you can stick it on there what I would recommend is there's some drain holes in there so I would recommend not covering those holes or drilling through this if needed um, just so that it doesn't block it so that if any water for any reason uh, it can drain um, through, through those holes because um, I think that's what it's made for. Um, might be wrong, but I think that's uh, that's what it is. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's it for the the battery, and uh, we are definitely uh, getting closer to to having a, a better setup here for uh, all the electronics and everything. 
All right, so let's take a look at the, the kit I got. Uh, this is, as you can see here, TJ. Uh, this is from TJ Virtual Custom. Um, it's one of the rare kit that actually is made for the VT600. Um, so it doesn't require any kind of welding. We do recommend to uh, put a strut at the end of the fender, um, like a CC bar or things like that, in order to um, uh, hold the um, defender at the end um, but in my case um, since the fender is going to be so short it wouldn't bend and touch the tire so that's that's one of the advantage of this kit is I just need that I don't need a strut or anything or CC bar to hold that fender in the back um, so the kit comes with uh, two bolts three nuts and then uh, with two spacers um, and then there is two more spacers Leave. Um, all right, I was looking for the two spacers that came with the kit and just had them in my pocket looking everywhere. Um, so uh, it comes with the three nuts, the two bolts here, uh, the two spacer, the two um, kind of a protective uh, leather um, o ring, uh, one a big bolt for uh, the main part of the kit and then with two mounting brackets. So the two mounting brackets actually go like this. Um, so the idea here is, and I'm not 100% sure about the position of the spacer yet. Uh, I'll need to look into this, um, but I'm guessing it's probably in between right here. You would have your, it mounts on the strut bolt. So you would replace this. Um, this, this bolt will replace the, your strut or suspension bolt. Uh, so you most likely have the suspension right here between the manual and all that. Um, then you would have this like this mounted. And um, and what it does is you have your fender right here and you're mounting those bolts. And this basically goes right here to protect the paint uh, of your fender, which I think is a good idea. Uh, and you know, it's like quite discreet, goes in behind. Um, and also not only the paint it protects, but the metal or the plastic that you have under uh, in order to avoid like breaking it. So it gives a little bit of pressure through this um, leather o-ring instead of putting it all on, on the rest. All right, so I mounted the uh, fender on the vise and we're gonna get rid of those things. pieces are cut uh, with keeping this piece here it would be harder to remove it anyway um, we have this piece that I tried to remove but it's no big deal this is gonna be the the rear and then uh, we're probably gonna cut it around somewhere around here um, so now that we have the fender bracket that's completely cut we can fit it properly on the tires what I just did is actually put the old chain on there, um, so it gives a gap um, between the tires and the fender. Uh, it's a pretty useful thing to do. Um, everybody does it this way, I think. And uh, this will give you a, a good amount of uh, clearance between the fender and the tire. Um, one thing I want to do is make sure that when, uh, first is where I'm gonna uh, cut the fender and also uh, where I'm gonna bolt. Um, uh, what I'm trying to do and I'll show you is um, so first is the the seat bracket that I haven't finished yet but I know will be positioned right here and what I want to make sure is if there is enough space between the fender and the seat bracket so that it doesn't touch basically um, and again there is no uh, those things there is no um, uh, suspension so it's not going to jump back to the seat but we still want to avoid uh, the clearance issue. So let's put this. So right now it's not touching, but it's quite close. Um, and let's uh, give it a little bit more space, maybe. 
Um, so you can see the advantage of uh, just a roll is I can put, you know, a lot more space and if I see any issue, I can just uh, change it. And here, even here, it doesn't touch and it's very, it's not the bottom, but uh, if I do the bottom, then I have an issue in clearance, unless I move the bracket further. good spot. Um, one thing to do also next is decide where to put this fender and I personally I put two marks already here um, based on things I've seen um, and and my preferences is uh, the fact also I don't uh, this is only gonna be a one-seater so there's not gonna be a passenger here and also I want to avoid having a strut bar here to hold the fender so in order to avoid that what you want to make sure is that the fender is not too long uh, remember this is the front fender so it's metallic um, so the fact that it's metal it doesn't um, bend as as much as plastic plastic could touch very easily the tire if you put plastic on there um, so what I'm hoping to do is a short fender like this um, and I need a little bit more clearance. You can see that even I put the, this, it's actually not even touching. It's actually touching the tire still. So hopefully if I can do enough clearance, the idea would be about like right about here, I think, something like this. just to move those but they don't there's no play in between um, and uh, I'll try to position it best way possible one thing I like here about this kit is that if so we need to imagine uh, the fender is attached so let's say they're in both leveled is that I have enough movement here like I can literally adjust the fender to make sure it's even evenly away from the tire um, in terms of angle I actually like this side this this my only concern here and um, as you can see the curve is your the curve of the tire and the fender is very different uh, the sorry the curve of the kit and the fender, which is the front fender in my case, is definitely very different. Um, so I'll need to figure that part out. All right, so we have the fender mounted. I trace the line, which is pretty much off. Off the fender, uh, this is the bad part, and this is the good one. So uh, it's approximately half, a little bit longer on this side. Uh, but you could actually do probably two rear fender with this. Um, uh, so I'm gonna cut this. So it will be a lot sh uh, easier to um, to deal with this uh, fender uh, over there, basically. first part was cutting uh, the thicker metal right here um, 
So that's where there is the holders, and uh, yeah, they're definitely a whole, uh, harder to cut, but uh, went through easily otherwise. Um, and so we have our short fender right here. Um, this is just temporary cut, um, we'll see well, how we do it, um, and further or something, um, and then go from there. But this will help on positioning it on the bike more easily and movable uh, in a much better way. So this is actually the next day. Um, uh, yesterday my uh, foam died, uh, no more battery. But what I did is I uh, drilled two holes. Uh, Size-wise, it's uh, three eight um, uh, inches. Um, so that's uh, that's the size of the holes, and it fits perfectly for the bolts. Uh, then what you have is you have the leather um, washer that comes with the kit. Then the uh, big piece bracket on each side and then the bolt. Uh, this is not uh, tight yet. Um, so one of the uh, issues that I have and I, I knew about it um, is the uh, the fact that you can see those things are not, they should be straight uh, instead of being so to, instead of being like this, it should be like right here. So, so the the angle here when they bend it is too much compared to what I need. Um, so I'm gonna bend it back. Uh, just so you know, this this is the way the kit comes. So by bending it back, you definitely void the warranty no matter what. So just just keep this in mind if you do that. The other option would be to create a, a spacer that is uh, basically kind of making it flat this way, uh, somewhat flat. Um, and then, uh, and that would just like sit nicely in, in, in that curve. Um, but this is a lot more complicated in my opinion than bending this back, especially with, with the vise that I have here. Um, so, um, so I'm gonna uh, remove those brackets, put them in the vise, um, and I'm uh, gonna bend them back. I have already the uh, the, um, the angle, so it's approximately like kind of this you can you need basically. So just a few degrees this way and that way for this one. So I'm putting the smallest piece here um, as I'm gonna have more leverage by pushing this than if I was doing it the other way around. Uh, so just uh, just uh, a note on that. So this is gonna be some um, trial and errors, um, hopefully not errors, but more trial. So I'm gonna bend it uh, a little bit and then we'll check and bend it back and then check uh, just on and on and on, uh, just to make sure that it's, I'm not bending it too much. The, um, the angle difference it's not it's not huge but you can see there is a, a little bit of difference in the angle there um, it's not massive difference but it should be enough to make sure that the fender sits properly so I'm gonna try since I've done uh, this one I'm gonna try on the bike to see if it's uh, if it's uh, a little bit better all right so I just checked quickly on the bike just did it off camera uh, since it's easier right now and uh, it actually looks somewhat good pr pretty close um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do uh, the other one as well and I'm gonna do the same angle as this uh, and I'll go from there um, I just don't want to push it too much I want to make sure that it's holding both on at the same time so I can get a better idea Like you can see this looks if you can see on the camera this looks much better than before it's not bad 
actually. Um, so I haven't tied Voos, but I will have to, uh, to make sure it's good. But so far, so good. Um, let me show you. So, the attach is much better. Um, it's sitting properly on the bolt. Uh, there's no space in between, so this is nice and nice and proper. Um, the bolts here are nicely done. It's definitely uh, some cleaning and painting to do. So it's not fully tight yet, but uh, you can see that I I can actually adjust the closeness of it, so which is nice. So the the brackets are actually not too bad in terms of uh, bending them. Um, just remember, it voids the warranty, but uh, in my case, I needed it. And actually, it's much nicer and easier setup than, than welding or some other stuff. Um, uh, and also this way, so when, as soon as I tie this, this will not move at all. Um, and, uh, and since this is small enough and it's metal, it's not gonna touch the tire for sure. So, so this is actually pretty good. I'm very happy of the results and I'll uh, give you an idea of the result from afar. This is how it looks like. Uh, and if <laughs> the seat bracket is not finished, but approximately, um, you know, it's it, it probably the, the seat bracket might be further to the left or the bike slightly higher because um, it's actually pretty low right now. Um, yeah, so that's... Um, that's it for the rear fender, very happy. All right guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. Uh, super happy that we actually uh, have the battery box now all set up. Uh, the fender as well, the fender needs to be rounded up on the bottom part and a little bit uh, straightened up in terms of cut. Um, then we'll be able to remove the paint from it and make sure it's all clean and nice. Uh, so that it's ready for painting in the future. Um, next time it's gonna be seat bracket. We, we, we need to actually, or I need to finish that. Um, uh, this is super important so that I'm done with the frame of the bike. Um, one thing also I'm gonna deal with is on top of the fender and seat bracket is removing the rear peg. We don't need boosts anymore. So I'll cut them from the frame. Um, and then we'll deal with the bottom part of the seat, which is under the seat. Um, want to make sure it's nice and clean so that I can put the electronics in there and, uh, and um, all the electric uh, parts in there with the fuse box and everything. Um, then we'll deal with uh, front end, uh, suspension, uh, wheels, everything is going to be a lot more cleaning. Painting, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do powder coating or painting for the frame and wheels, probably powder coating. But um, in the meantime, um, I'll, uh, I'll deal with what we have so far. Um, if you have any questions uh, or uh, comments, feel free to leave them down below. If you want to support the channel and also stay tuned for the next video, don't forget to subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up, and I'll uh, catch you up next time.